Hello, everybody. Greetings to Shimokitazawa. Shimokitazawa is a neighborhood not too far away from Shibuya and Shinjuku. You can get there on the Keio line, which is right here. This is the Inokashira line. And you can also get here at the Odaku line, which is right here. They kind of intersect right here at Shimokitazawa. And this is an amazing neighborhood to walk around, to stroll around, to see, to have lunch. And there's a lot of history here. And there's a good story about why people are actually here why it hasn't changed that much over the years. And we're going to go over this in this really interesting walk and look around Shimokitazawa. This is what you subscribe for. So join us as we walk through going this direction and I get completely lost. <laughs> I have not been here in a while. So I had to get my bearings before I started the live stream. This place has changed a lot. As you can see, there's a lot of construction going on. A lot of it to uh, fix the area up before they hit the 2020 Olympics. This will be a very busy place. It's considered to be a hipster town. Some of the words they used to describe it is bohemian. Um, you'll find a lot of craft beer places, those kinds of people, people who wear Keens. Maybe they wear Birkenstocks, you know, the type. I'm not one of them. I just wear Keens because they're comfortable. I'm not sure if there's any gypsies here at OCD Stig, but if there are, we'll find them. It's really close to Shibuya and Shinjuku. You can take um, the Odaki line from Shinjuku. I think it's about five minutes, two stops. Then you can take the Inokashira line also. It's about five minutes as well. But if you want to walk here, I came by Choda line to Yoyogi Uehara station and walked about 15 minutes. And you get to, you get lost in the winding roads of Shimokitazawa. It's, it, it, now, let me go over a little bit of the history before we start to walk and get completely lost. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find my way here. All right. So this area is famous for being in the Edo period. It was just a farm field. All right. There was nothing here. And it wasn't until after the great Kanto earthquake of 1921 that people started to come over here to live because the city was dangerous. Uh, they didn't like the risks of living downtown anymore. There were fires. There were just buildings collapsing, so they came out here to live. And it wasn't until 1921-22 that this became a residential neighborhood. People started to move here. Thus, there's just chaos. I guess it was maybe because people settled here so quickly, they didn't make a grid system or anything. This, they just needed a place to live after the earthquake. So people started to move here after World War II. This wasn't bombed so much. Um, there were lots of fires in the city destroyed in the center. And Shimokitazawa, which is kind of I don't know, like the countryside of Tokyo in a way. It's separated. It would take a good hour to walk here from Shinjuku or Shibuya. This area wasn't so touched by World War II according to history. I wasn't here. And then uh, I guess it was in the 1970s. Uh, well, after World War II, this is this was a place where a lot of the GIs would come. A, a lot of secondhand markets. Very, very famous for having secondhand markets. You'll find used clothes. You'll find um, even used hats used everything bags you can find here at a, at a really big discount but that's what gives this place this vibe it's local it's not a lot of chain shops although i see a lot right now but it's changing just like the rest of the city not a lot of chain shops um, which makes this place really refreshing it is a breath of fresh air if you don't like harajuku if you're tired of the center of the city, you want to take a break and walk around someplace that seems more local, but still in Tokyo. That is here, Shimokitazawa. This is a place where you can get lost. It's a place where you wander the streets. A lot of the GIs after World War II came here to, um, for the markets to buy used stuff. And in the 1970s, this is when it became a hipster town. All the hippies were here. There's some chains already. You see Caldi, Jennifer's chain. And the hippies in the 1970s made it what it is today. Kind of that vibe which sticks with this town. It hasn't changed much. And I think the locals like it that way. Very, very trendy. Some of the other words that come to mind when you think of Shimokitazawa, like uh, musicians, indie bands, local productions, directors, a lot of uh, screenings for local movies. 
little small, a lot of small businesses in the arts are based here. There are also a lot of theaters in this area. So if you want to see uh, plays and a little bit stuff with a little bit more edge to it, you're going to come to Shimokitazawa. I don't know what's new and what's old because I haven't been here in maybe five or six years. <laughs> this sort of looks new, but it seems like a glasses store, but it's a circus up there. It's a fun looking glasses store. Again, here we go. Some used, used clothes out here. Or are they new? It's hard to t tell. It's just right out here off of the road. Hey, Derwei Chan, bring something back for Kanai. You got it. Photo looks. Hawaii's here. Hey, Austin. Look at this place. Robson Fries from Canada. What? I heard about this place. This is one of the only places in Tokyo where you can get poutine. So Canadians are probably going to not come here, but maybe they should and taste some Canadian poutine done different. That looks a lot smaller than the ones that I had in Montreal. Barbecue cheese potato. Wow. Poutine is like cheese curds on fries and with gravy. It's awesome. We had that in Montreal at um, a meetup last Christmas. It was, I, um, I, it was amazing. So Robson Fries is here. That was neat to see. Here's some more uh, used clothes used items, just a kind of, I don't know, a mix of all sorts of things here. But this is not Don Quixote, but it sort of looks like it. It sort of looks like it. This one is called T4. And if you look up, I always sort of look up, you can see um, a used vintage clothing, men's and ladies, and it has every map of the world. It's kind of neat. And let's just take a quick look inside. Just right here. Wow. That's like a museum of stuff. And there's price tags written on it like this here, 300 yen plus tax. Yeah. I love the vibe here. You can just stroll around and I tell people they always ask me what, what where should I go in Tokyo? What should I do here? And I say, "You know what? Make a day where you don't plan anything." and you just kind of walk around the streets and get lost. And this is a kind of place where you might want to do that, Shimokitazawa. It just feels, it feels like you're always discovering something. You turn left and right and there's something new there. Whoosh, look up here. This is a, uh, they, it looks like a brand new sign, but it's a, a second street reuse shop. It's another recycle shop with used clothing. That's, pretty interesting. I mean, it's, it's just tons of these shops. So if you're looking for vintage clothing, stuff that might be, um, I don't know, in, in, a, in a different style or yesterday's style, you'll, you'll be able to find it here in Shimokitazawa. Another rainbow kitchen serving natural cafe and dining. It's kind of neat. What do they got on the menu here? Buffalo chicken wings. Hey now, that looks pretty good. 600 yen for that. That's, that's pretty reasonable. They got tacos down here. Beer starts at a reasonable, uh, for a heartland, 450 yen, which is uh, for a draft beer. Corona's 550 yen, which is like five bucks. Not bad at all. You can see there's some hipsters right there coming towards us. All right, we're gonna go, we're gonna totally get lost. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm not going back the way I came. I'm gonna keep going to new places, but I love the vibe here. This is a mom and pop shop. You can tell because no chain would use that. Um, <laughs> no chain would use that. Uh, it's nice. It's nice to see because in today's world, everything is, you know, um, shopping malls are going out of business because of Amazon and, and online sales and you, here, 
people will still come out and shop from mom and pop places like this. The dream of owning a shop is still very much alive here as a small business. And that's, that's a very good thing. Here's another lunch menu. They have hot coffee, hoji cha, which is a uh, burned green tea with less caffeine. That's nice. Wow, they got some good stuff on the menu. It's, it's also a place where you can get a cheap, cheap lunch as well. Um, the magic price for lunch is 500 yen, one coin. It's about that big. And uh, that's weird. Look at that. You get This is a cleaning locker. What is that? What? Hold on a second. I got to investigate. So I guess, I guess you can put your stuff in here for, and they put your stuff in here for after hours pickup maybe? Yeah, for, so you have to pick it up within two days. That's interesting. I did not know that. The hours, you know, I, I heard here that the hours for places, and there's a karaoke place here on the right side, they open a little bit later. Um, everything seem, tends to open around 11 a.m. So you don't want to come here too early. Maybe sleep in if you're, or, or explore another area, or walk here from Shinjuku or Shibuya. It takes about an hour. And uh, by the time you get here, things will be open. Because it's sort of bohemian, I, I, I guess it, it's got that hippie flair to it. Things open later. People just are kind of more laid back here. Ben avails in the house. Absolutely, I will be getting some street food. Um, it's on the other side of the, the tracks, so I'll be over there. I'm building up a hunger right now. Here's another cafe. This does not, this is not a chain. Uh, Cafe Normale. And they got some pretty neat looking burgers. A little smaller. Um, but the price is right. You can get these as takeout. This is Namahamu and mozzarella for 399 yen, which is about $4 um, with tax. And the dessert looks pretty good too. I, I think this would be pretty neat to chill outside right here in the corner and watch people walk by, right? You can walk by the big avocado. <laughs> right there. What are the street names Ronald writes in? You know what, Ronald? This place, even if I give you the street names, there's just really no way to to navigate this. Because of the way this town was set up in this area, Setagaya, a lot of the towns here um, after the great Kanto earthquake are just, it, it's, it's illogical. There's no there's no way to really navigate your way unless you, you just walk the streets here often. And I don't do that, so I expect to get lost. I expect to find cacti <laughs> on the corner. This is cacti being sold on the corner, but yet it's also a restaurant here. And they're advertising Bonin Kai, or end of your parties, all you can drink and eat for 3,500 yen, which is a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good deal. Here's a, a takeout coffee. It's a very stylish looking coffee, Oto Coffee, O-T-O. But inside of Oto Coffee, they're selling clothing. Wait a second here. So this place here, this this place here uh, sells cactuses, and it's also like a bar. You can sit outside here. This looks like a really nice, quiet side street. Lots of alleys, just winding all over the place. You can sit outside here, have lunch, have a beer, have a Corona, and then you can, um, you know, buy some cactus, I guess. Take what you like and, and, and pay for it inside. I love the way that they write the Japanese here too. I always tell everybody, what's the best way to, to study Japanese? Learn katakana and hiragana. If you can read katakana, you can read this menu. You can read this menu. All right, this is this says here, desato, dessert. Chocolate waffle, chocolate waffle. I mean, you can kind of figure it out from the pictures, but by looking at it, cinnamon, cinnamon. Sugar, sugar, waffle. Shinoman sugar waffle. You can read this if you learn katakana. And once you read katakana, the language of Japanese language gets a lot easier. That's the shortcut. If you don't learn katakana and hiragana, you won't be able to learn Japanese um, without just simply speaking it every day and being forced into it. All right, this is a cafe on the corner here. Oto Cafe. Combined with a shop that sells vintage clothing. Look at that. Is that not awesome? So you, 
she's selling coffee here on the corner here and selling vintage clothes. Oh man, I love that. That combination means that you never really go into business because you've diversified. And th this is a vintage place where people are looking for this. Oh, look at this. This is a throwback of a stationary store. Look at this, Kikuya. The sign looks like it goes all the way back to like the 1950s and uh, definitely family owned. You can look at all the, the stickers and seals on the side of it here. Inside of it is all sorts of stationery. Um, stationery is becoming less and less important because everyone's on digital phones and making it digital. They have some Christmas cards out here. Uh, that's, that's nice. I like, I like to see that. I like to see that. Here's a, a takeaway lemonade stand. So you get a little, bit here, a little bit more to street food. You're starting to see that here. This is a tapioca place on the corner. And this parking lot has been turned into a place where you can sit and drink. No cars allowed. That's, that's pretty nice. So you can have a tapioca drink right here. Very cool. Hey, Zato71's in the house. Greetings. Shimokitazawa is, yeah, it's a place where you walk around and get lost and uh, you'll discover a lot of things that way. I can't tell you the street names, but I put, I, I will put a, a link in the description so you can find a map of where this is. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Manhole cover. That's Tokyo's manhole cover, which is a Sakura cherry blossom. All right, I right, have right here in my pocket a map and I'm gonna show you exactly where Shimokitazawa is. Whoa, look at that pink truck. Things are just different here. All right, so I'm gonna walk a little bit away from the music and you take a look at this map here. There's graffiti here too. All right, this is our treasure map. This is Akihabara. Here's the Tokyo Bay, here's Tokyo Station. Here's the Imperial Palace in the middle of it. Um, Shinjuku is right here and Shibuya is right here. These are the two closest places to Shimokitazawa and I kind of outlined the entire neighborhood here. Up here is Nakano. So you can walk in about an hour from Nakano, from Shinjuku or Shibuya, and it takes you about the same amount of distance. Probably Shibuya is a little bit closer. And then down here, you can see the intersection between the two train lines. I kind of burned it uh, there, but Shimokitazawa is between two train lines. And that makes it pretty neat because um, it's easy to get here, either from Shibuya or Shinjuku, you can see, right? So that, that should give you an overview. It's, it's a little bit outside of the center. Here's the Yamanote line here. So it's a little bit outside, about two or three stops. That makes it countryside. <laughs> that makes it countryside. Yeah, I've walked here from Shibuya before. It's a, it's a good hour. Wow, I love the little art here. Look at that. Kids have drawn on the asphalt here. And if you ever really study it and just, just take a look at it, you'll see lots of designs that you wouldn't see. Um, there's, uh, there's always Ampaman. There's always an Ampaman. You see right there? Kids always draw an Ampaman. It's good to know those characters. And then here's some, some urban art here. Looks like a diverse neighborhood. You, you get that picture from here, don't you? Lots of different kinds of people. It's changed a lot over the years. Across there, you can see a steak place. Oh man. Again, loads and loads of little restaurants, family run, not so many chains. This is the place where you can get tickets, uh, discount tickets for either the theater or for, oh, there goes the train. Here comes the train. I think that's the Odaku line coming in. So we've, got, so we've gone around this area of Chimokitazawa. Here's one of the side streets. This will cut back to where we um, walked across to. So we've just gone in a circle around here. Let's go back to the station. We're gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna show you where a lot of the um, theaters are. On the other side is, I would say Tokyo's big theater district. There's a Yakiniku place, because it says Niku. And it's really neat because you, you can sit outside and enjoy your lunch and dinner. That's, that pink truck is the beer truck. They're bringing kegs of beer, restocking up for tonight. This is a chain right here. 
So you, you get to see I, the, the station front is changing quite a bit compared to, I don't know, five years ago. And lot, last time I was here, I did not see many chains at all. Maybe just a supermarket, a couple of shops, a few language schools. Here's a supermarket right here on the left side. As the beer man makes its delivery at, at rapid pace. <laughs> Somebody really needs to get their beer. Let's see what vegetables are going for. It's nice to see right here on the on the side of the street. You get a big box of tomatoes for four dollars. These I think these are from Kumamoto. These look like they could be from Kumamoto. That's pretty reasonable. Mikan season is right now in in um, December. Around the end of November to about February or so, you get Mikans, and that's the vitamin C that people eat tons of these to try to ward off sickness. Avocados have become popular. About You know, when I came here 20 years ago, you couldn't find avocados anywhere, and now they're just everywhere, all from Mexico. So that's good to see, but yeah, the avocado boom is here. And some Mikans you can see from all over. And what's a good Mikan? It's hard to say. Um, I like my Mikans from Fukuoka, usually really good. Shizuoka has some good ones. Island areas. Kagoshima has, down Kyushu has maybe the best. I love these. Oh yeah, look at these. Do you know what these are? Do you know what these are? These are called Kinkan. Kinkan are super small. These are a little bit bigger, but they're, they're super small um, oranges, citrus fruit, and you can eat the whole thing. You eat the skin. I remember the first time I ate King Kong, I, I tried to peel it and it took a while. One, some local was laughing at me. He wouldn't tell me why. And then I learned by watching other people, they just eat the whole thing. And it gives a, a slight bitterness to it with a nice sweetness to the middle of it. Yeah, King Kong are so good. If you do come and you can get a box of these for $3, about $3 for one of these and just snack on them. Make sure you wash them. Oh man, I love King Kong. They're really good in, in uh, Shikoku Island as well. You'll find them all over the place. And of course, it's strawberry season here. Strawberries are going for about 500 yen, 498 for pack. This one is the, um, ah, Tochi Otome. That's a variety. There's tons of varieties of strawberries. They smell so good here on the street. You have no idea. Ichigo-san. These are so beautiful, these um, dessert strawberries. And then we have the khaki persimmons here. And then apples. It's uh, apple season up in Aomori. So you get some of that. And of course some La France, which is a pear. The beer guy, he moves fast. I'm looking back at, at the supermarket. On the right side of it, there's another um, yakiniku restaurant. So. Loads of places to get some meat. There's also, let me see here, an Asian flavor restaurant. You know, these places are over here on this side of the city, tons and tons of tabe hodai. Tabe hodai means all you can eat. And it's a thousand yen. That's ridiculously cheap. This is Indian curry for a thousand yen or about nine, ten dollars. All you can eat. Oh man, butter chicken curry, spinach chicken curry, green pea curry, kima curry, vegetarian curry, bean curry. There's something for everybody, including the vegetarians. Shish kebabs, cheese naan, naan, biryani rice, rice, vegetable uh, pokara, set A, set B. These are different, but the, actually, I, maybe I'll come back here for this. All you can eat, Indian curry. Can I be mad if I end up eating there? Let's go back this way towards the station and wrap around. Some of you might be wondering, whoa, this place is really cool. How much does it cost to live here? Let's have a look. <laughs> it's right here. That is small, this apartment. What? There's a little balcony. It's a two minute walk. Um, the lights from the place are flickering um, in the frequency. The, so sorry about that. The balcony is so small. It's nine tatami mats. You can see the toilet and the sink and the bathtub right here. It's so small. How much is this? It's 700, a little bit over $700 a month for that closet size. This one looks a little bit bigger, but uh, an older building. This one was built in 1982. Um, it requires one month deposit and one month key money. 
So you got to pay up front about, um, I don't know, $1,700 up front, and you get this place. It looks kind of old, though, but it's got a lot more space to it. One room, flooring. That is not big at all. I don't, I can't do that anymore. I can't do that anymore. I, I used to live in a place just, I used to live in a place called Futako Tamagawa. Futako Tamagawa is not that far away from here. And uh, I paid $1,000 a month. Actually, the school paid. I was an English teacher. It was $1,000 a month to live near the station. It was a 1K, meaning like it was, I think it was six or seven tatami mats. But the, the good thing about this apartment was it had like a Murphy bed. You know, no, I don't know if a lot of people remember these. In the olden days, you used to have these beds that would, you'd be able to put them into the wall and you could pull them down. So it saved a lot of space. I had this Murphy bed that pulled out. Um, yeah, but it was just too small. I spent most of my time not in that apartment. I spent most of my time um, at the Mr. Donuts across the street. Gyoza restaurant. A lot of drinkings going on here. What? What is this here? A Rakuten shop? I guess Rakuten is now competing with Docomo and SoftBank. And they're also doing cell phone service. Rakuten is like the Amazon competitor. They got their hands in everything. That's some pretty good, pretty cheap. 24 gigabytes a month for the plan, the, the double L plan right there, 24 gigabytes per month. And it's now with the plan about $50 for that. That's not too bad. It starts at two gigs a month for about $15. But I guess if you have, if you're one of their members, you get it at the lower price right there. Sky Hodai, all you can use. Rakuten Mobile. Interesting. I, I, was, I didn't know much about that. Here's a haircut place um, called Cut Factory. It is, it, that might be expensive. EJH writes inexpensive. It's about $10 for a haircut. It's not too bad. All right, we're back here where we started. That's the Odaku line. Here's Shimoki Tazawa Station. I was contacted by this guy. This is the, the Mr. Pooh. His uh, associate said that he's such a kind guy and he'd like to meet me, but I never met him. <laughs> I don't know. I, I could, just wasn't really interested in meeting um, a man who walks around with poo on his head. Not that there's anything wrong with it. This is a, a local sento, and uh, I made a video on, on many of these in this, in this area with the local sento association because a lot of them are going out of business because after World War II, um, people started to build houses um, with plumbing and there was no need to go to the public baths as much and just the old timers go by habit. I go because it sort of feels like I'm more in Japan. So the Honda Theater is right there, I believe. That's one of the big theaters. Uh, I think there's seven, six or seven theaters that you can go to here in uh, Shimo Kitazawa. That's a lot. So at nighttime, we gotta come back at night because it's gonna be so lit up. Lots of little bars. You know, we've been walking past these little restaurants and at night, people come here drinking a lot. So this taxi get by. The roads are the roads are super narrow here. So it's very hard to drive through. It's also quite congested. So we're now on the other side of the of the tracks here. And we're gonna walk around and get lost and then loop back around. Again, I, I highly recommend if you do come to Shimo Kitazawa to just wander. Take a day and just wander. This is a, wow, they call it a sushi go-round restaurant. And you can see inside of there, the sushi going around. Prices are reasonable, about 100 yen. You'll find weird art, not just graffiti, but you throw back to another era. Look at that. Here's a supermarket down there. 
look at that building back there. It just doesn't seem to fit, and yet it it really does. This is like the the um, bubble era architecture here, slapped up in the 70s and 80s, and it's still here. See that brick there, and then next to it, this green building that looks like it's from a different country, right next to an escalator and a little skyscraper supermarket with a Uniqlo inside. It, it just doesn't make sense. The architecture is just so mixed up. That's what makes it really, really interesting to walk around and look at all the bicycles, all the little detail, all the cracks in the street. It gives it this area so much personality. Tapioca. The boom is dying out though. Tapioca is not as popular as it used to be. No longer are the days where people would line up for for hour to get tapioca. Here's a two LDK, um, seven minute walk from the station, $1,000. Here's the plan. You can see th two rooms and a dining and kitchen. So, pricey here. And that's a seven minute walk, which means it's probably a 10 minute walk. Whenever they do the measurements for walking, it's some guy who walks really fast. Or, or some lady who walks really fast. Oh, you see this truck right here? What they do is they go around, they go around the neighborhoods. And let me see, hold on a second. This one's taking the bicycles. So all these bicycles that are illegally parked, he's, he's come here to, to take them away. And obviously you can see here, they made a sign. Don't put, park your bike here. Go around to the back of this of this supermarket here and park there. But yeah, even in Japan, they don't do that. They'll park in the front, which is convenient with their bicycles. And this truck is here to take them away. And they're gonna lose their bikes. And it, it's very rare that it's very rare that you'll see personal belongings being taken away by the city. You have to have a tag. So first they'll give you a warning. They'll put a tag on your on your handlebar. And if you have a tag when this guy comes around, yeah, he's gonna take your bike away. That means you've, you've left your bike here for too long. And the city says, uh-uh, it's time for you to move on. Here's the Ticket King. There's another discount ticket place. You can get Shinkansen tickets for maybe $10 off from here. Again, the back, to, back area here is more residential. It's a maze. Let's see how much the Shinkansen tickets are. How much cheaper are they? You don't have to buy the tickets from JR from the station. You can get them at places like this and save money. I've never, I've never been ripped off or had somebody steal, like give fake tickets. That just doesn't happen in Japan. Not, not from a store. They'll, they'll get in trouble. All right, let's. Let's go walk in a little bit. There's a little little cafe, restaurant. Joe Hatab, where is Joe? Joe is in Russia right now. Joe is in Russia. He left Japan about two and a half days ago, three days ago. He left. No, he left the day that we came back from to Japan. He was uh, he was getting on a flight going to Russia good friend of mine he's uh, um, from the Air the biggest one of the biggest youtubers from the Arab world it's nice to nice when he calls me and we can hang out for a little bit well wow, there's a Burger King coming in here I, that, that's kind of rare to see chains coming into this area but it's inevitable I guess the real estate has to go or people can't afford here's a another shop that you can buy used clothes and Things from different uh, different cultures. Across the street is another one. A used clothing store, domestic style. They'll buy it too. It says here they'll buy your used clothes. If you want to sell something, bring it over here. You never know. In fact, you can bring, fill your suitcase with used clothes, come here and sell it, and then buy more used clothes and take it back. And every time you come to Japan, just keep buying new used clothes. It's one way to do it. It's interesting. This here is a tapioca, 
a Chinese tapioca restaurant next to a doner kebab restaurant. So it's kind of neat to see all sorts of international foods popping up. I saw the Korean cheese dog too, not too far away. Oh, there's the place that Simon Martina took me to. I've never been there in 20 years of living here, um, but I probably won't be going here very often either. This place is called Tori, Tori Kizoku, and I've never, I've never been to Tori Kizoku before. Simon and Martina took me there and said, you've never been to, to, to Tori Kizoku? And I said, no, no. It's cheap, it's decent, it's a chain, it's everywhere. It's all right. It's all right. I don't know. I kind of, I've always been somebody who cooks for himself here in Japan. I'll go to the supermarket and cook. And now Kanai and I, we, we mostly eat at home. There's another one across the street. How crazy is that? Torikizoku. Usually you can order it from like an iPad on the table and uh, the food comes pretty quickly. Let's look at the menu. Whoa, you can get a mega beer, mega alcohol. Uh, yeah, it's $3, it's not bad. Yakitori. It's a good menu. Menchikatsu. They don't open until um, 5 p.m. and 4 p.m. And uh, they close at 4 a.m. Last order at 3 a.m. So it's an izakaya. It's an izakaya. There's Mr. Donuts. Good old Mr. Donuts. And then you can look down the street here. I love it. The It's so friendly. It's like a walk-friendly town. It's, it's a place where you can stroll around and get lost. Don't ask me where I am. <laughs> I remember somebody asked me, and it, just getting off of the street, it turns into residential. And you don't have to go far before you hit residential areas. Bikes, bike parking is a problem. And you'll see all over the area places. It'll, it'll guide you where to bike, uh, guide you where to park your bike. But let's, let's just take a quick look at this. What are the fines like? So if they do take your bicycle, um, you have to pay. If, if they take your bicycle, you have to pay $30 to get it back and if they take your bike or a motorcycle small motorcycles called bike It's uh, about $40 4,000 yen to get it back. It's a retrieval fee. They call it Interesting, so don't don't park your bike and they've actually listed the parking spots and places where you can't park Which is right where <laughs> right where that truck is these bicycles are, and then of course there's always young people who'll just park right next to it. <laughs> right next to the sign that says don't park. Another thing, sorry, another thing that you can't do here is smoke while walking. It's pretty strict too, and you'll have an old lady tell you, don't do it, don't do it. Deadly Ravers here, love your show. I hope you'll make a video for Yokosuka one day. Yeah, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking of going down there and visiting, visiting some friends. I, it's it's hard it's hard not to have being being an expat or American here it's hard not to have friends at at one of the military bases Yokosuka is the naval base and there's some really cool places around there um, it'd be yeah you know what it'd be I know I always miss the friendship day because they put it on in the summer when they have all of the fireworks festivals so I always miss the friendship day I've been there once in 20 years it's not enough Again, when a truck does come, you have to kind of go to the side and wait for it to pass through. Konnichiwa. This looks like a really nice coffee. Hi, thank you very much. He said, introduce a lot of places, he told me. Look at this place. It's a coffee shop. You can smell it out the door. And they serve all sorts of coffee pots and things like this that you would need for coffee. The Malita coffee, coffee pots here. So if you... Just want to make it at home or in your hotel room? I guess you could pick up something. Oh, look at that old roaster. Wow, that's how you do it. 
you know? There's always, there's just something cool about doing it the old fashioned way. Because nowadays everything seems so plastic. That's a, it's a m nice to see. All right, lots of restaurants here. Whoosh. Some discounts, there's another Tabe Hodai. Uh, Genghis Khan, like a barbecue. Look at that meat tower, what? Now I'm getting hungry. I, all right, it's time to find some street food. Let's see what we can find here. I like the plastic models. That that um, um, alm rice looks good. Underneath there's rice under all that tomato. That karage looks amazing. How much is that karage? Everything seems to be about 900 yen. All right, there, there's a karage teishoku. It's about 900 yen. Very good. All the power lines in Japan are above ground because of earthquakes. Oh, there's a Daiso here. I didn't know they... Again, the chains are coming in. So you got the 100 yen shop here in Shimokitazawa as well, not too far from the station. So you can get a, a blue sheet and, or things to have a picnic. If it's raining, you can grab an umbrella really cheap or a rain poncho. That's, that's good to know. Here's another used clothing store. Again, you, if you look up, sometimes they go to third, fourth floor. These look like they could be residential places, but I guess sometimes they turn the residential places into little shops too. As you've seen, we've seen like hybrid shops where they'll be selling coffee on the corner and inside will be a vintage clothing store. Like there's a Miller Time light. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Wow, all you can drink for $10. Food is food is separate. It's about a hundred yen for each yakitori. That's pretty reasonable. Oh gosh, I'm getting hungry. I haven't seen any of the street food. I came here from um, Yoyogi Uehara Station on the Chota Line. I walked here, took about 20 minutes. And I'm now looking for. I, I passed a bunch of street foods. Whoa! Check it out. They're making udon. That would be good for lunch. getting hungry. It's nice you can see inside the kitchen while they're making making the udon. Stretching out the dough. Udon is always made fresh. I, I very at restaurants I don't think people will eat at an udon shop if it's not made fresh. This is the, okay this is the um, the chain from Shikoku. It's quite good. They have everything in English, which is interesting. They didn't have this a couple of years ago, but with all the foreign tourists coming, everything is now being translated into English. There's mentaiko egg udon. That looks amazing. This is spicy fish eggs on top of a, a bowl, and you can see the eggs tossed in there with the dashi. Underneath there, really thick udon noodles. So cheap. Udon is a, is, is a perfect lunch. Love the eggs on top of it, the mentaiko uh, kamatama udon. Check that out. Next to the egg is the um, spicy fish roe. And the eggs in Japan are amazing, raw. You, you think if, if it's not something that you do in your culture here, look at the color of it. They're so nutritious. Raw eggs in Japan are good. This place is Tsukimen. All right. Tsukimen restaurant. You can get the Tsukimen order it from the vending machine here and then you give the ticket to to give the ticket to the owner and then that's what you're going to get it smells great outside oh they got the hanjuku tamago check it out the, this is just slightly congealed egg tsukimen is like ramen i guess it's sort of the noodles are different but you pick it up and you dip it and then you eat it what's great about it is that the noodles are cold and the soup is hot and when you warm the noodles up, it, it, it brings out the taste of the noodles. So you don't want to eat it when it's hot. It's, it's nice to have the soup warm it up. 
And because the noodles are cold, it cools down the soup. It's a win-win. Tsukimen. Tsukimen is Tsukimen's incredible. Tsukimen's really incredible. Loads of steak places. I know Japan, when I came here 20 years ago, Japan didn't really eat a lot of beef. Meat was something that was like, you'd add it into food as an enhancer. It was never really the main dish. But nowadays, steaks are everywhere. You can smell it out here on the street in this area. Steak. More vintage clothes, more. Someone saw the Uruguay flag. <laughs> There's the beef. <laughs> Smell it. Smell it. There's a net cafe. You're not seeing these as, as much as you used to as well because people all have smartphones, but net cafes are also places that are open 24 hours typically. There it is, 24 hours on the top. And if you miss your last train, a lot of people will just hole up here in the middle of the night and get a booth and just surf the net until the first train, which is like 5.45 or so, and then they'll go home. Oh, look at these clothing for the little doggies. It's pretty cool. This is a family-run shop as well. Pet Smile, it's called. Pet Smile. Very cool. So we're just about at the end of the street here. Let's walk a little bit around here. We're going to wrap around and go towards Shimokitazawa Station. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is the way I walked. There's some street food on the way. And then, uh, yeah, we'll wrap things up. If you want to see me eat some street food, let's get to 500 likes, shall we? This is the challenge to the community. This is where the, the thumbnail was taken, right here. Do you see that? I love the little art that you'll find on the walls walking around Shimo Kitazawa. This one's kind of famous, this street here. Let's take a closer look. That's, that, that kind of just summarizes Shimo Kitazawa. Very artistic, vintage clothing, used clothing. But it's starting to lose just a little bit. I, I don't feel the same way as, as I did when I was here five years ago. And for the first time, like a couple of decades ago, it's just always evolving. There's more chains now. Even the people, they're less hippie-ish. And that makes sense because we're so far removed from the 1970s. But it just, it's different. It's different than it was. I love that, the clothing outside, a bicycle, a mother of two. A mother of two, you can see she's got a baby, baby car in the front, a baby car in the back. All right, let's go to the intersection here. We'll walk around and wrap around to uh, some street food. Maybe get some there's a ton of construction. You can hear it everywhere. This is more used places here. This is a thrift shop. Tokyo used clothing. Looks like the Salvation Army, doesn't it? Got to go up the stairs. I like how they use this. They use the wall with hooks. <laughs> you can see. What do they have on offer? Some Michael Jordan 1980s sweatshirts. Look at that bad boy. This is Chicago. This is famous. You'll find this shop in um, Harajuku. This is the Ki um, Shimo Kitazawa shop. They have a pretty good selection of used clothing up here. This one is different and it's worth shopping. It's worth jumping into different Chicago's. You can find different things at each one of them. They, I, I think they typically try to s separate things in the categories. If you can't find a size at the one Chicago in Harajuku, you can come here and find the one here. You'll find it all. Look at that, like the 1980s North Face kind of looking color. Mustard yellow is not in style anymore, isn't it? Is it? Is it? These are nice. 
that's a really thick flannel. That's got to be warm. Oh, look at these trench coats. Looks like Columbo was here. Whoa, this is a Negan jacket. When did they sell baseball bats inside? Negan's whole gang can get their jackets here. Whoa. All right, let's go down this other street here. Yakitori Place. This is this this whole live stream is just to give you an overview. I think a lot of people before they make the trip here, they kind of want to get an idea of what's in this area, what's in Shimokitazawa. I think if you watch this for an hour, you better know. That's a really cheap uh, Chinese cuisine place. They got good gyoza in there. I would say it's good. It's it's like commercial um, chain stuff, but it'll fill you up. So I'm gonna pan around here. Panning around here. He's directing traffic because of all the construction. This is a, a lot of intersections and this plaza here is, is pretty lively. I bet you at night you can grab a couple of beers from the convenience store and just sit around and drink. I get that kind of a feeling like that's maybe what people might do. There's an Eikaiwan English school on the corner. Neil's place. 15 minutes of Eikaiwa converse, English conversation for 300 yen. That's pretty cheap. How does Neil stay in business? How you doing? All right, we're gonna go down here. Cars can't come down this road, so I'm pretty sure I came down here, didn't I? Before? Oh, look at this little little shrine on the on the corner here. Hello? Hi. You found me. I'm in the middle. Hey. Hi there. <laughs> we came Hello. all the way from Australia to find you. Oh wow! You, yes. You've given us many, many uh, videos to look at. We went on the the Azon line the other day. Oh, down from, Kyoto. Awesome. Yeah. We got some amazing photos. So when you go up there in autumn, it looks absolutely amazing. Oh, do, are the leaves still on the trees there? Yeah, they are. I can show you some if you like. Oh yeah, I heard it's super crowded though. Yeah. Well, the Azon line wasn't too bad actually. It looked, it was really, really pretty though. Um, we were hoping you'd do a live or Were you nearby? Uh, we're in um, um, Ikibukuro. Uh, Ikibukuro. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we a mad dash test. Come and meet you. We literally went on a John Hunt. And we get a card. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Thank you. I, I, I better give it to you before I forget. Here you go. <laughs> so this is Kurama Station. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, they fixed the nose. That's good. They yeah. had like cables out of it because of the typhoon. And I take a lot of photos of the trees, but they were just really, really pretty. And that's just the side of um, Kurama Station. Uh, and coming up, you can see all the damage from the typhoon that you mentioned. Oh, right. Um, so, and it's really pretty oh, just to walk around beautiful. as well. This was just w was recently. Yeah, three days uh, about three days ago. Um, oh, whoops. good. Um, you know, that's just on the walk through. Yeah, the that's where I was in in, yeah. in uh, a few months ago. Yeah, it was really, really pretty. And that's it, your video that made us go up there. Yeah. Um, so we had a bit, bit of a walk around up there and then we've just kept exploring. And that's some of the damage from the... Um, oh, yeah. From the typhoon. Oh, uh, they clean it up a little bit though. That's good. Yeah. Oh. That's good. So what brings you down this way? What's I don't know. I haven't... I, I was looking at the map of Tokyo and I said, where haven't I been? ever in a live stream. <laughs> Shimokitazawa was one of the places and we uh, haven't been here either. Oh yeah. really? It's, down here at it's, a, we'll it's a pretty cool there. vibe. I'm looking for some street food. Um, this is where the thumbnail was taken. It's pretty neat right there. Oh nice. So there's, and I was gonna just show this uh, shrine just on the corner here. That's kind of neat. Um, when you go on all of the all of the residential train lines you can see all the shrines in the little villages. That's yeah. Really cool um, and the differences in the houses between this is interesting. Why is this tree here like this? It's like with the with the color the blue colored building in the background. This could be like Panama. It just kind of feels like <laughs> it, it feels. In Australia, we dress up our mobile phone towers as trees. 
That could be it? No. I, mean, I don't know. All I know is that... It's you... so green out here. Our whole country's on fire at the moment. Oh, oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope everyone in Australia is doing okay. Is it just in uh, on New South Wales? New South side? Wales and Queensland. Oh. A lot of fires happening there. Um, and it's going to get worse. We're about to go through a heat wave. So luckily we're here in 13 degree weather and at home. Yeah, come, come evacuate, come to, Japan, nice evacuate cool. to Japan. I'm sorry to hear, but we'll, we'll welcome you. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. They do really good ramen here. Yes, of course. Do they do good ramen in Australia? I haven't been able to find anything really <laughs> decent. Um, no. In fact, we came here in May and I've just been whinging to my wife the whole time. We need to come back. Because um, the ramen is just so good. Yeah. Um, and there's a ramen place that I went to in Singapore that has its headquarters in Tokyo. So we had to find that when ah. we got here. Uh, and it's just as good as I remember. Did you, have the, uh, did you go to uh, Ichijoji Ramen Town? No, we didn't do that Oh, one. that's on the Eze line. Yeah, the yeah. Eze line. We, we kind of just rode the Eze line up, got to um, Karama and just went back. Well, we made the ramen. We went um, to but there is a ramen that... making course in Osaka. Okay. Yeah. Um, not Osaka, um, Kyoto. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we did that. You get to punch the ramen out and make yeah. it. It's really fun. And you get to eat We're it. We're not you get to it. eat it. We That's the fun part. You get to eat it. You get to yeah. eat it. Yeah. You get to eat it. Okay. You just have to follow her instructions because she says only one scoop. And yeah. yeah. Do you, do you wanna, I'm, I'm looking for street food. Are you hungry? I was just going to walk around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm, I, well, we did, been down here otherwise. Did, so did, you, come, come, did you come this direction? So. Uh, no, no, we came down the street that you walked down. Okay. It was part of the John Hunt. It's like, where, where, where is he now? <laughs> I know, and because I don't know exactly where exact where I am, it's hard to tell anybody where I'm going like next. When we heard you were Whoa. in Germany, we thought, oh, we're not going to be able to go John Hunt. You left. <laughs> <laughs> What is that a thing? John, John hunting? It is for us and our friends. I, I well, there's lots of people so. that have been doing. That's why I made those cards up. You well, found me. Right. Yeah, our friends are gonna be so jealous. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just send them a photo of that saying we found him. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll go and watch. The <laughs> you can write Shimo Kitazawa and the time. I I I, I, yeah, I don't no, actually yeah, write that. Yeah, uh, there's I only made 400 of them. I guess that's like that's like 200. And maybe that no. It's you're yeah you're in the top top 100. Let's put it like that. <laughs> oh look at that garlic steak. Well, I'm all for I'm all for um. Food. You love me. Let's see what we can find. I think I walked this way, but I didn't talk this way. All right. Construction. They always have two or three people to make sure you, you're safely patrolling the construction zones. All right, it, this looks a little bit familiar. I, I have a, a feeling, a tingle of street food somewhere around here. I think they have some takoyaki. I think they have some takoyaki. But uh, yeah, this is on the fringe here. I think if, you, if we make a left over there, we wrap around back to the station. But uh, do you have any questions? We, we did not get to 500 likes, so technically I don't have to buy any street food, but I, I will. I will. Like, let me fix that. <laughs> we, can, we can use all the likes we can get. Use all the likes we can get. All right. All right, you can see the um, Odaku line coming in from over there. Whoa, these look like the Osaka Obachan. Tiger Prince, what? Nico Salon. Oh, okay, I heard about this place. This looks like street food. What is this? This is a meat roll. I guess we, we can get this. It's almost like an Australian. Look at that, these are meat rolls. Well, they have all these different kinds. All right, I'm, I'm in, I, I could do this here. Let's see what they got here. They have, uh, Niku cheese curry. That looks good. Cheese curry with with uh, Ninik uh, Nikan tomato cheese. Niku. Oh, they all start with Niku. Niku Tares. Yeah. Niku. There's some vegetables on there. Some kari kari. That one's a little bit crispy. All right, I'm gonna try one of these here. The kimchi looks good too down there, and the natto would be the most challenging. Who wants? Who wants some natto? What are you thinking, Tim? What are you gonna have? 
You have I'll, no idea. I'll pass on the nacho. Fermented soybeans, anyone? Why? It looks so good, doesn't it? I think I think the 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 uh, cheese curry looks like the most interesting to me. Yeah, the cheese curry, but the ryu with the spicy chili oil also looks good. Taberu ryu. All right, let's get. Let, I'm gonna go with the cheese curry then. Yeah. I'll have the original it's cheese curry. One. Yeah, let's play right. it safe. All right, this sounds like a copyright music here. Um, hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, konnichiwa. Hi, cheese kare. Oh, there's a menu right there. You can get cocktails here too. So we said the cocktails starting from 100 yen for non-alcohol and about 300 yen for the alcohol. All right. Very good. Very good. It smells good in here. Right. This sounds pretty retro here. I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Uh, I don't know it. I, I don't know if this is copyrighted music, so I'm like wanting to get out of here really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do I go over the copyright music? It's hard to do it. Just to, I can maybe I can cut the audio later. I don't know. It's hot. You know when you when you get in these live streaming situations, there's no way around it. I think our friends over there is going to get some. I, I, I've rudely not introduced myself properly. Um, so I'll wait for them. Then I'll introduce myself. Let's get off of the street for a second here. I can put, the, I can put this on a, um, on a tripod. And uh, as I said, and I started this live stream, the hipsters love this area. I guess we found uh, away from all of the... The uh, shopping street there is where you're gonna find some really interesting stuff. You just walk around. Because shops in Tokyo don't really stick around very often, very long. I mean, every couple of years they'll change. Hey, David Kimura, thank you. I might be putting that to use for Kanai's lunch. We're, we're by the way, everybody, we're going to um, the German market in putting the tripod on. We're going to the German market, Christmas market in Shiba Park. So if you're in Tokyo later this afternoon, we'll be there. Can I sort of misses the German market? We just got back from there, but there's that. All right, let's just take a look and see what we've ordered here. Look at that. It's on, on a seaweed, on seaweed on there, I guess, so it doesn't soak into the tissue. And there's some cheese on there, and curry, sesame, and around the rice in the middle of it is wrapped a piece of meat, and it smells pretty good. There's some there's some seaweed nori inside of the wrapper as well. It does look messy. It does look, it does look a little sloppy. It's all right. Which one did you get? Original. The original. We played it safe. <laughs> I did not. As as the internet is oh, saying, yeah. it looks sloppy. <laughs> the picture kind of made it look like an Aussie sausage roll. Yeah, like, it was a like sausage roll. Yeah, I think the rice makes it healthy-ish. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so it's meat wrapped around rice, is it? Yeah, it's like a meat onigiri, I guess is one way to say. It's not bad. I'm not so good at it. Uh, exploring different types of foods. Tim will pretty much eat anything. Chicken feet are one of his favorite, like, really? meals yeah. back home. But yeah, that oh. doesn't look too bad. Can you give it a go? Mm. Mm. Okay. Inside is like a peel off rice, looks like. The rice has some flavor on it. 
Very, Very interesting. interesting. Teriyaki? There's a teriyaki taste. This is so. This is curry. The cheese, cheese gives it another dimension. I don't think you need to have the cheese with the curry, but they did it. Yeah. Well, it's definitely something we wouldn't have, we would have just walked past and not tried. So. Yeah. <laughs> now. I was gonna take whatever I could see first. It just, it just came up first. Well, that's the good thing about it, trying different things. Mmm. Yeah. Pretty good. There you go. It's not bad. Where are you off to next? Um, we'll probably head back to Iki Bukuru now that we've done our stalking <laughs> for the day. Yeah. Arcades. It's all about the arcades for me, so. Oh, did you go to the one in Takara no Baba? You mean arcades as in like, video games? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the gem pushes, the claw machines, all that kind yeah. of stuff. That's a re that they had a lot of retro games in Takara no Baba. I think it made a show on that retro game center. Mm -hmm. It was we pretty interesting. It. Yeah, my yeah. brother would be really into that one. It's one of the things I, I, I went to um, Hard Off yesterday um, in Akihabara, mm. um, and I'll pick up a couple laptops every time I'm here. I picked up one last time. I've grabbed two this time. I take it back to Australia, pick some all up. Um, They're about as old as him, so they don't thanks. really. Yeah. Um, but you know, I can pick some up, and that way I've got a bit of a retro museum pattern. Wow, okay. You know, uh, that's why I love coming to Akihabara and Turkey. You can get really cool and obscure and weird things. Yeah. That's true. Well, we can explore here a little more. And then back, yeah? <clears throat> no. Yeah, I, I met in uh, March um, Steve Wozniak. Oh, really? And he was telling me old stories about coming to Akihabara in the 1980s. Wow. And all the electronics he would find for parts. And yeah. He said he bought a, a Nintendo Game Boy here that he still plays. Um, so I'm hoping, Steve, I don't know if you watch, but I have I have his email. So if he does come here, I would love to hear some of his stories and kind of capture that for the show. Yeah, that'd get an be image. Yeah, mm -hmm. get an image of what uh, Akihabara was like during the bubble era. Yeah. He's got a lot of stories, I know. Yeah. Untold. That would have been your dream, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'll make sure I'm here for that one. Um, but yeah, there's there's Super Potato. There's um, there's one in Tokyo and one in Osaka, and there's a couple of other retro gaming shops just littered around up here, Lara. Mm. Um, you know, I can pick up a Nintendo 64 for 30 Australian dollars. Wow. Um, so it might be that. Um, <laughs> depends on how much luggage there is. Yeah. How long is this trip for? It ends on Thursday. Okay. Um, so we've been here for about a week. Um, so, we've done a lot of stuff this time we haven't normally done, um, yeah. and a lot of it has been because of your videos. Yeah. Um, especially good. the Azan line one, that was the one where we were just like, nah, we don't know. Try the Ekonomiyaki. <clears throat> oh yeah, I love the Azan line. I'm, I was thinking of going back to Kyoto next week and do some um, um, filming down there, but I, oh, I was just worried about the leaves, like uh, how far along is autumn, and it looks yeah. like... We're like at the end of it, but... Definitely, it yeah. is, um, but look, the deer part was fun. Um, I've also got the, the deer poop. Oh, oh Nara! <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had to find that. Yeah. Um, they sell deer poop in Nara. It's true. Oh, it's so chocolate funny. coated. Yeah, it was like one of the only things I had to buy while we were there. Um, it was like three. It said, "Don't take any pictures," but the lady said we could take pictures, but she wouldn't remove the sign to take pictures. If you ask, if you ask to take a picture, it's okay. But if you don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why it was weird. Like the the leaves still there, so that's on the okay. second before you get into um, into Nara. Yeah. Um, Nana might be. Oh yeah, and that's one just standing outside. There's the, the deer. You guys want to see the deer? The deer. Yeah. There you go. That's not out. Yeah. Deer mating season. The signs were saying. Oh no! Says, if you can't believe deer mating season. They will knock you over. Do not mess with the deer. I I I, I don't know if you've, you've seen the episode where Kevin Riley and I we go down to Nada for street food. Yeah, one head butts you. <laughs> that that hurt. <laughs> you hurt my feelings too. Because I was trying to give it to the smaller deer, I like the underdog, and then the big deer just, he, yeah. you have to pay the big deer in order to get to the small deer. Yeah, but yeah. we're doing the same thing, like they come and they, 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 not leave they munch at you, <laughs> they munch at you, at your clothes and try and get your food. Yeah, don't touch <laughs> me, just give me more, <laughs> just give me more. So, as soon as they know you have the food, they'll just follow you along. I had one following me for a good five minutes. Did they bow? Did you get them to bow before yeah. they give it yeah, to you? Yeah, it was really cool. So they just stand on the sidelines and just bow at you, expecting the food. Um, they do more than bow. They'll just imitate you and do whatever you do. I go like this, and the deer will go like this too. <laughs> and they, they just imitate you, and then they know whatever you do, they do it. And then, I guess because people have seen it on, on the internet that they bow, 
but you can go like this. That's what I did in, in yeah. um, Miyajima. They freak out so much when you've got the like the tourists that are really scared with them, and then they'll chase yeah. after them. And yeah, they really there's like so many people. Ones. Little it's kids that watch, freak yeah. out and they yeah. run away. It's Get the little kids, right? I've seen them chase down little yeah. kids. I've seen I've seen um, the crows chase down little kids. Oh, the crows! Yeah, they were a little like, ah, ah. There and like so the kids are really like running away, and the crows will gang up on the little kids. Yeah. I've seen it. Awful and so cool That's at the, the same time. It was a cute little old, um, little old lady, probably at that height, um, that was being <laughs> harassed by one of them. And she kept running this way, and the two would follow, and yeah. she'd run back. Oh, away. so once crows smell weakness, they go all over you. Yeah, Toby. We've got magpies back home. Magpies? Yeah, it's like, like a kind ones. of a they crow. Just, yeah. yeah. So and during just swooping. yeah mating season, they'll be up in the trees. You won't know they're there, and they just fly at your face. Whoa! So they'll, yeah, they'll take a chunk out. They're pretty. Magpies are hard, more hardcore than the crows, maybe. I yeah. know. We've got that, and we've got plovers. These little um, you know bundles of evil that wander around ah. and will attack you on sight. And you have this. Australia is an amazing place. No, it's not. With this <laughs> wa it's like deadly. I remember in Alice Springs drinking a beer and then looking at a wall behind me and there was a tarantula the size of my head just looking back at me. That sounds like home. He'll be yeah. alright. He, he won't anyway. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't bother me. I didn't bother him, but I was still freaked out because I'd never seen a, a spider that big. And I don't even call it a spider. It was like, it belonged to a spider. zoo yeah. behind that, cages. That's kind of how we work. You know, if you don't bother it, it generally doesn't bother you. Yeah. Yeah. Is okay. It, well, yeah. should we hit the road? <laughs> I would think so. Yeah. Well, thanks so thanks much for yeah. for finding me. Yeah, thanks so much. And yeah. Let's get the oh, wow, an actual bin in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> You're not part of the history of the channel. Can we get a photo? Oh, yeah, sure. So here's the meat, the meatball shop. Uh, Niku. Uh, wait, hold on a sec. Niku so roll. I think it's Niko. like Niko's roll. Niko's roll. Nikos roll. Nikos roll. That almost sounds like an Aussie shot. Nikos rolls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll grab a selfie. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, John. You're welcome. What was your Thank names you. again? Sorry. Tim and Mel. Yeah. Tim and Mel. Nice From to meet Australia. you, Mel. Thank you. We look forward to seeing the next one. <laughs> you really have. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thanks, enjoy. Have a good trip, guys. That was nice. It's always fun to share a little bit of the adventure with people. That's kind of makes these live streams fun. If people can find me, we can share some street food and it's a lot better to eat with friends than it is to eat alone. All right, I'm trying to get my bearings now. So we're gonna end the live stream in a second. Um, we still didn't get to 500 likes. I was, gonna, I was gonna get another street food, but looks like maybe I'll just pass. The pasta here looks incredible. They put an entire crab in that, what? It's pretty crazy. This one looks like a chain, though. Very nice. Whoosh. I guess I can go this way. Here's a uh, DVD, a CD. Looks like they sell used stuff, of course. Used manga here. And then, yeah, there's some used One Piece. Some other manga. I guess if you're looking to fill in a collection, you can't find something, you might want to come in here. Used, used books. Wow. Very cool quiet back here. This is just an alley off of the main road. Ichiran. Is that the ramen place? I'm not big into the into the um, chain ramen places. Wow, it looks really crowded too. There's, well, I wouldn't say really crowded. It's just people waiting. That's crowded for me. Crowded for me. So I hope this gave you a pretty good idea of Shimo Kitazawa and you feel comfortable walking around. It's like a big eight. You can you can wrap around the station, come back to the station, you can wrap around like a big eight. 
or you can just go off road and go even deeper and find <laughs> find unique things by getting off of that eight and just going deeper, deeper into Shimo Kitazawa, finding unique things. Once again, this this place started as um, like a, an escape from the Great Kanto earthquake in 1921, 22. People came here and started to turn this farm field into a residential area. I know this guy. He's been twice in our live streams delivering beer. <laughs> He's all over the place. They drink a lot of beer here. 1923. Thank you for that. And um, since then, it's really evolved into it evolved into hippie town. So you'll see a lot of used clothes, a lot of used books, manga, all sorts of things. People reselling it. A um, lot of mom and pop shops, not known for chains, but more and more as we get closer to the 2020 Olympics, local business owners, because property is high, are selling out. And you're seeing it right now, which is kind of a, a shame. It's a little bit sad, but, you know, I get it. I just hope that it doesn't turn into Harajuku because Hara, Takeshita Street oh, is a Prikura, Prikura place. Harajuku is a place where I kind of avoid now. Oh, these, look at these retro games here. Check that out. You don't see these too often. Whoa, that's a House of the Dead? The first game I ever played in Japan was House of the Dead, the first one in 1998. Used to play that all the time in Nagoya near the Hard Rock Cafe, which I think is out of business. Oh man, you pick up the gun and you would, you enter the world of the dead. We didn't have those kind of games in, in the 1990s in the US, at least I don't think we did. It was awesome. And then after a while, you get to know there's the zombie house inside of House of the Dead. You play the game for like an hour. And there's the good old days. Fujisoba, it's another classic. This would be considered maybe Japanese fast food. Uh, you come outside, see what you want. There's numbers there. So it helps you um, decide on the vending machine because you have to order by vending machine. The vending machine is right there, you see inside of the shop. Pick it by the number, and that's what you're gonna get. So it makes it pretty easy to buy, and all, everything is about one coin, 500 yen. So, I like Fujisoba, it's nice. And guess what? We're back at the station. You see that overhang? That there's the station. I hope you enjoyed it. This is what you subscribe for, live streams from all over the country. Today we're in Shimo Kitazawa. Thanks so much for watching. I'll put a link in the description so you can see how to get here. I think it's worth exploring. Spend a day in your trip where you don't plan anything and you just walk around the streets. And uh, this is one of the neighborhoods I think where you're gonna get the most out of your trip. Seeing mm, a better, I, 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 like instead of Harajuku, come here. That's what I would say. And you're gonna see a lot of the same stuff. There. I, just a recommendation of, that I have for you. I like this area, a lot of personality. It's changing though, so when you come here, it might look a little bit different, but oh, I'll show you here on the map then. I'll show you here on the map. I showed you earlier about an hour ago, but we'll take a quick look, see. This guy had the same idea. Shimo Kitazawa, you can see it, it crosses two lines, the In Inokashira and the Odaku line. Um, we walked like this, like a circle, and then we came back around and we walked like this. I think we went out a little bit further. So we pretty much walked like a figure eight around the station, okay, like this. And if you get deeper, you can walk to Shibuya Shinjuku if you like, but it's neat to spend a couple of hours walking around and eating and drinking coffee, cafes, and enjoying the, the beautiful view and the strange architecture. It's just so weird. You can see the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, and even up to 2020 sometimes being built around. So if you liked it, click like, subscribe. If you wanna see more, make sure you get the notifications, click the bell for always. And I'll see you in another live stream, maybe later today at the Christmas market in Shiba Park near Tokyo Tower. Kanai is gonna be joining me and she's hungry. I'm getting a little bit hungry. This was just an overview. It wasn't like a street food episode, but I bet you if we go to the market, 
um, at Chiba Park. We're gonna eat a lot, so maybe see you in a few hours. If you're in the, the US, have a good night. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye from Shimokitazawa.